Well, let's get into uh, Skinwalkers. I don't know if you guys saw the uh, the post I made on the Chaluminati uh, Twitter, but did you see that web page I was deep diving into with the like the space stars and like <laughs> I was like, it's a whole website dedicated to Skinwalker Ranch that just documents everything, and they have all kinds of reports and shit on it, and it was just. Going through that website, it felt, again, very similar to Amityville, where I just felt like I was diving into this person who just discovered GeoCities and decided to make their own website. It was just like... Did you ever listen to uh, Astonishing Legends? I have not. That is where I found out about this. Oh, really? They, they, they were the same, like, specifically about Skinwalker Ranch, they were like, we just, like, went into this on, like, a recommendation, yeah. and, like, by the end, we were like... Holy fuck. Yeah, like, it's wild. Like, it's it's so, so I probably spent the better half. Oh, by the way, hello everybody and welcome to the uh, Chiluminati podcast episode 2. We should probably get into it uh, officially. I'm super excited. This is going to be a really fun episode. Uh this week we're going to be talking about the legend of the Skinwalkers, which is um an ancient uh American Indian Navajo kind of lore thing that there's a lot to it that I didn't expect to and um, the first half of, of the two weeks between episodes, I spent diving into Skinwalker Ranch before I was, before I made, like, an executive decision of, let's just do <laughs> Skinwalkers for right now, because... Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, Skinwalker Ranch might be one of those things where we might have to do, like, two episodes on it at some point. Yeah, it's just like the Warrens. It's like, there's a lot to yeah, say. Yeah, there's a whole, whole lot to say. But, um, before we get into this episode, I want to say a couple things. First... Uh, we are now officially up on iTunes, we're on SoundCloud, we're on uh, Stitcher, Tuner, you name it, uh, Google Play, you name it, we're on it. I have submitted for Spotify, so if you listen at any one of those, especially iTunes, and you enjoy the podcast, hit the five stars. We already have 19 or 18 five-star ratings on iTunes just on the Hell first yeah. episode, so thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, also, there should be a, a nice little musical intro that plays at the beginning of this episode, and I want to thank uh, Matthew Proft for that musical intro it's it's legit it's so good it, it's really it is good. incredibly good we got a bunch of musical stuff sent our way um but that like that is exactly what we kind of envisioned right away so thank you man that that's yeah. that's awesome it's like within 24 hours yeah it was like, it was oh like within the 24 hours of the episode going live people he was just like here you go and i'm like holy shit that's that's perfect that's perfect <laughs> Um, anyway, so thank you guys so much for the support on the first episode. We are, we are super excited to keep doing this for you. Um, I know a lot of people are like, we want, I want weekly, I want weekly. Let's, let's do this for, you know, every bi, bi weekly for a while and see how it pans out. And then, uh, if, if people are super into it, I'm down to go weekly as long as the other boys are as well. But, um, quite a shift from going from Amityville to Skinwalkers, uh, this episode yeah we went to like crazy town right away yeah, i mean the, the thing is like if you're gonna do this right if you're gonna do a podcast like this is there really any other thing than diving into crazy town like as soon as possible I feel like that's another great name for this podcast is just the crazy town the crazy podcast <laughs> <laughs> i mean it, it went wait just wait man when we get like when we start doing ufos jesse's gonna lose his mind here's the thing no ufos I will never argue on the possibility of life existing out in the universe. That'll never be an issue for okay, me. But I just think UFO. I, if I was an alien from another galaxy, I'd be like, "Nah, I don't need to stop okay, over there." So like, you keep <laughs> driving through that town. See, you don't stop. You're like, "There's, there's." Mm. All they got McDonald's. I'm out. I know, there's no reason for me to go there. But here's the, here's what's going. You'll lose your mind about Jesse when we eventually get there. Is there's, there's the the theory and, and the belief that UFOs are from an, an, another planet out in space or whatever. Are you saying it's time travel? I'm s- I'm get- saying that there's also the possibility that UFOs are actually from a parallel dimension and can warp space and time to breach that line between our realities. Again, again, let me just put this out there. <laughs> You're from a different parallel dimension. You say to yourself, I want to go to Earth 2017, 2018. Why would you well, do that? There's there is- Of all the times you can travel... No, I'm okay. like, nah, but, I'll but, pass on but that. Here, like, I don't want to get into it, but the reason they do it and the reason that they're here is because human humanity and humans are able to access a very particular type of energy. And I, I'm not going to get into it. Easier is than that energy called le bullshit? <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> that's, that's what it sounds I'm, like. I'm, dude, again, wait till we get there. Because that is... We got, I, I don't know how much I, Alex I, knows already, about what I'm talking about, but... I do, I do, I do know what you're talking about. And I, I am like... I am also like off work. Like as soon as we finished the first episode, I was like, "Oh my god, there's so many yes, things that I yes. want to like, you know, talk about." And I already started like doing research on some things. I like 
got I, I tracked like an urban legend down <laughs> to its very first appearance <laughs> ordered the book from the 80s awesome. reached out to the author got a statement dude, from the dude, author that's so great like wait yeah. like you with ufos man like um like there's so many different theories of like do you subscribe to like the i think it's like the dominant 12 alien species which include like the grays and the and the tall whites and the nordics and the reptilians yeah i can't wait i can't fucking wait. no the answer is no i do not subscribe <laughs> to that i do not subscribe to the to the ravings of lunatics no i don't i don't every once in a while jesse you run across one of those stories that, that i don't could, know what it is ab- there, there are yes there are some stories i truly believe that there's the possibility right. that maybe 0.5 percent of alien related stories could be true but the other 99.5% is bullshit. About, People make it up because they want to feel important. What about the uh, totally, the recent like totally declassification real. the government did of like Project What Black Book or whatever? That's what I'm yeah. saying. But but I don't I wouldn't say that, oh yes, well that's clearly one of the twelve dominant oh, aliens. No, yeah, of course. I'd say like who knows what that could be? It's an unidentified flying object. It could be anything. Who do like what do we know? <laughs> true. true. It's but, right. But for them to be like, it is uh, definitely one of the tall white Nordic men. <laughs> like, no, no, that's not real. That's not a real thing. The Stop tall it. white Nordic men. You just men, you combine dude. two alien races together. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> there's, I'm so sorry. There's the tall whites, which are the they're in charge of the the Greys, which we're commonly we commonly run into. Right. Everyone thought the Greys. Oh, I know this bullshit. Everyone thought the Greys were like the aliens, but actually the Greys turned are out really to be like, Mr. Burns. The organic, or the, the like, organic robot yes. things that like do the work. Yes. And all. Like I know all that <laughs> bullshit. Here's the thing. Here's the bullshit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I refuse to subscribe to nonsense. I'm this sorry. Is, this show, you guys don't even know what sort of great arguments we have baked into the <laughs> oh, future of this wait. show. Okay, already. okay, we gotta, we gotta focus up. Today, though, episode yeah. two of the Illuminati Chul- podcast, we're gonna be talking about. Skinwalkers, or as I like to call them, the ultimate evil druid prestige class in a D and D game or a video game. <laughs> because holy it's hell, like, it's like they're f- fucking cool. They're scary. It's scarily accurate. Like that's like a very like apt description of them. Actually, if you know about like D and D, yeah. The more I read about them, the more I was like, my god, I could make a D and D character based on this. I don't know anything so, about Skinwalkers so let's, let's at set, all. Get ready. Oh, Get fucking ready. Let, let's start. To, see, let's set the scene for you. You're driving down a dark road in New Mexico, the middle of the night. Your tow truck is is bumbling down this busted up road, and in the distance, am I the tow truck driver? Or yeah, you're the, the, you're the driver. The you're truck? the driver. All right. Question. Oh, right, que- is there anyone in the passenger se- passenger seat? And is it a ghost that I picked up on the it side is, of the road? It is actually uh, a, a a small gray from a crashed alien spaceship that you are. Is that gray a ghost I picked up it on the side of the road? It is a ghost of a gray. Of a, yes, it's exactly what it oh is. Oh my god! It's Jesus. Okay. It's Jesus Christ riding with you. Yeah. I mean, Jesus always yeah, rides yeah. with me, dude. Yeah. Okay. So, and you see, like, the glint of, of like, uh, of an animal's eyes in the middle of the road in the distance, and it's probably a coyote. But the closer you get, the more, more you realize those eyes are more human than they're animal. And then that coyote, as you drive by it, looks at you, and you notice its face is contorted, half human, half beast. And as you drive by it, it starts what? sprinting down the road with you, keeping up 60 miles an hour. And then it gets up off of its to uh, its four legs, and it's now a human, a man, still bestial, but keeping up with you and chasing you. That's impossible. That's, a, That's no a skinwalker. man can run on two because legs. Because he's a skinwalker. He's no longer just a man. That's not. Nope, but he became, you said he became a man. Well, he looks like I he's still skin. bestial. He's like a beast man. Yeah. All right, look, look, in this scenario, yes. if someone was a beast, yes. if I, first off, I noticed that some beast had the eyes of a man, which, if I notice that, you know what? I'm doing good. I'm doing pretty good that night. <laughs> and then, if he starts following me, I'd be like, what the hell is this? If he turned into a man next to me, I'd run my, my pickup truck into him. <laughs> I'd take my tow truck and slam it into him, and then i report to the police and be like, that guy <laughs> was a beast man. If it were only so easy. Right, if it were only so easy. It- so let's... Let's get into what a skinwalker is. So where, where do they come from? What is a skinwalker? Well, a skinwalker comes from Diné, which is the uh, native term for what we call Navajo culture. Uh, By the way, while we're here at the top of this episode, guys, we do not have great like grasp on the way that these words oh, can be properly no, pronounced. Whoa, we're getting into some weird so, shit, so... So let's so let's just all agree that you know what we're gonna try our best, okay? right? And you know, we're gonna do our best. And if you think we're wrong, tell me in the comments. That's totally fine. Or do your own research and tell me where I'm wrong there. 
Um, so there's going to be a. L- so this is this is like a like a Native American. This thing, is a then. yes. This is a Native yes. American thing. Um, uh, all right, all right. I'm there's some. Native American stories that I am truly inclined to be like, hmm. Yeah. So, all right, is, all right, I'll let you, I'll let you take let me, me on an adventure. <laughs> we might, you might get there. By the time we start talking about the ranch, whenever we get there, then you're going to start feeling like, whoa. Yes. All right. So, um, uh, as I said, they, they, they are derived from Diné or Navajo culture. Um, they're witches. Witches are seen as the polar opposite of ceremonial people, where ceremonial people will sing to heal and protect people. Witches do the opposite. Everything they do is evil and intended to hurt or curse and whatnot. And that's kind of where skin watcher, skinwalkers are. That's what they are in Diné culture. They're witches uh, and they're evil. Uh, witches, it's like black magic kind of Exactly. Vibes, yeah. Witches are associated with harm to the community, transgression of societal standards, uh, especially those relating to family and the dead. Very very, very um, kind of broad evil doers. Uh, the okay, here's a word. Now, pardon me if I say it wrong. The Yi Naldushi is the type of witch that we know as skinwalkers. So there are different types of witches, and the one we're focusing on here is the Yi Naldalushi. Naldalushi. Nal- Yi Naldalushi. Yes. Uh, skinwalkers is, is what they're known as. Um, they are believed to take forms of animals in order to travel in secret and do harm to the innocent. In the Navajo language, it tra- the Yi Naldalushi actually translates directly to, with it, he goes on all fours. Uh, perhaps the most common variety is seen in horror fiction by non-Navajo people, uh, is the one variety that uh, specifically referred to as Antijini. And that is the type that... Like I said, they're they're the type that turns into a beast man, can turn into animals, terrorizes innocent people. So werewolves people. is what you're saying. Very very yeah? werewolf esque, but you got to understand werewolves. They have that that full moon where they can't control themselves and they get bitten. Usually, it's an accident if you become right. a werewolf. Whereas in this case, you're like almost like a druid, like an evil. So this is uh the wolf guys in in Twilight. Then Kinda. I have never seen as or a person read who's Twilight, never seen that so movie. I, I yeah, I assume. I've seen enough of the trailers to know they apparently can turn into wolves at the flip of a switch. So it's like it's kind that? of like that. It's kind of like that, except like they're like straight up actually villains. Right. Yep. Nope. They're straight up. Well, I mean, how do you know that? Why are they so villains? Let's, let's, why that's are just they what the they villains? are? Because we'll get it here. Here, you want to know why they're villains? Because they're weapon of choice, and a lot of the reason that they, uh, one of the things they have to use to kill somebody in order to become one of these things, which we'll get into the, that ritual in a little bit, is something known as. Corpse powder or corpse pi- uh, poison, which is antij, a n t j, meaning literally witchery or harming, is a substance made from powdered corpses. The powder is used by witches to curse their victims. Corpse dust is composed of ground infant bones or often twin infants, specifically bones from the fingertips and the back of the skull. The Yi Naldalushi blow it into the faces of their victims or down the chimney of the victims' homes. Soon, that's cold, right? Dude. That's it's awful. Soon after, yeah. soon after they've inhaled it and breathed it in, taken it into their system, um, their tongue will start to swell and blacken. They undergo convulsions and die non, not long after. Sometimes, however, it just they just end up dying from what is seen as normal disease. I, you know what? I don't believe that for a minute. I, I'm. Which part? Yeah. The the like like if they had gone into specifics, like the dust causes you to have a blackened tongue and it swells, then you go into convulsions and die, and that was it. Period. It's like okay, this powder everyone knows. Like oh, that must be a skinwalker. But then dot dot dot. Sometimes, however, victims simply just die because uh, uh it seems like a normal disease, which well, is that's the BS factor. That's like the you kind of eh, remember. You know, you got to remember this is like part of their folklore also. So, yeah. you know, a lot of the time, you know, even if it's not actually like one of these stories that we'll get into later, like, you know, it's it, it's kind of like a folk thing that like, you know, oh, sometimes when somebody's sick, it's actually like a witch. Yeah, that's what I... I yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm hedging my bets. I just feel like it's a little much to have the dot, 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 and then more yeah. things. I, I'm saying it's quite possible because if there is a skinwalker out there listening to this and they want to prove to the world they exist by killing me... I believe. I believe you exist. Don't. Don't. don't I don't need that. It does. Give him the black me. tongue shit. Give him the black tongue shit. Don't give don't him give just that. regular disease. I don't want the black tongue shit. No, man. Would, rather don't than put a regular that on disease. Me. I mean, I'm with Alex. It's like the the whole disease thing that probably comes from 
older times where they couldn't explain where does where the how somebody got sick, so they were probably just like, oh, it must be. Oh, absolutely, the but that's but I think that's the whole. I think that's the whole thing. At least yeah. so far from what I've heard, it's the <laughs> idea of we can't explain X, Y, and Z, so we put the blame on this yeah, and, other supernatural, otherworldly and you thing see that, that right. scares kids and keeps people in line. It, it's the it's the old like Middle Ages thing mm-hmm. of like we'll just keep coming up with crazy, terrible things that if you don't do this, this is going to yeah. happen to you. That kind of Actually, stuff. Actually, I was going to say you you see that a lot in a, in folklore around the world where literal like kids disappearing. Could be just blamed on monsters or this certain disease Absolutely. is blamed on on witches and hell we were dealing with that in colonial times we were blaming we were the witch trials and all that stuff so um, another reason too though Jesse a counterpoint that you may not know the specifics is because traditionally Navajos hesitate to discuss any lore or witchcraft with anybody that's non Navajo or who they just simply do not trust so can I ask you a question yes. or or is it possible that they're like Hey, you white idiot, stop asking us questions about stuff that isn't a real thing. We're trying to live our lives. Well, it's not central Well, it's not central to their to their religion. You know what I mean? Like it's not really I, I I'd say this is like one of those things that you pull down the black casebook and like talk about because I mean, while it does stay in folklore most of the time, the stories that you don't want to tell people are the yeah. ones that are and hard to swallow. There are still a ton of stories happening today uh, of people seeing skinwalkers. And like I said, there's a whole skinwalker subreddit and everything. Uh, I saw a video of a, of a border patrol guard. Um, he was just talking on camera interview style uh, about how he multiple times have come across animals that would then stand upright like a man and run off cackling. Like, uh, just weird, weird, weird shit. But then again... But why would an animal... Why would a skinwalker show up and be like, ha, 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 gotcha, bitch, and run away? It doesn't make sense. So, actually, it's a very good question. Um, the, one of the reasons is the, the coy- they, they, they dedicate themselves in a, lo- in a lot of the time to a coyote-like god. And that particular god is the god of trickster, of tricking people. And, and they, they revel in the idea of causing immense fear and terror in those that they come across. They don't necessarily want to kill all the time. Um, a lot of the time, they just want to fuck with you. And It's like ev- it's like PR for evil. Right, yeah, it's evil PR. Right? It just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just makes everything very convenient that, like, they, they're they tricksters, so they disappear all the time, right. and that's why you never see them. Uh, but I saw it, right? <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, of course you did, because they're tricksters. I just... Uh, all right, well, this all right. this is an audio podcast, but I do again, just like that kid on the stairs who turned out to be that dude from that paranormal investigation at Amityville. Like, oh yeah, I I implore you to go look up some evidence, like some video or picture evidence of some skinwalkers, because some of the stuff out there yeah. is not tight. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I wrote this down in the notes, but one of the things that people say is they people will actively go out there and try and track skinwalkers. And 99% of the time, they either are led to a dead end or led back to their own home. And they blame that on the on the skinwalker tricking them, as opposed to them getting lost and not finding anything. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, specifically, animals associated with witchcraft like this usually inclu- include the tricksters such as the coyote, but include other creatures, usually those associated with death or bad omens. They might also possess living animals or people and walk around in their bodies by locking eyes with them. Skinwalkers may be male or female, but they are typically male. Uh, skin, skinwalker stories told among Navajo children may be uh, complete with life and death struggles and the typical kind of fairy tale that you would tell children to not have them go out at night or be home by a certain time type deal. Um, or they usually end with the, the, the Navajo being killed or the kid being kidnapped. Uh, or the fat, or it's a stalemate where the the skinwalker will just be scared away. Very rarely, if ever, do the stories have anything to do with the Navajo winning the fight or uh, coming out victorious at the end of an encounter with a skinwalker. That usually does not happen. The best that usually happens in any of the stories is that the skinwalker is spooked off for one reason or another. Um, let's see. Non-native interpretations of skinwalker stories typically take the form of partial encounter stories on the road, which is the thing I was describing in the beginning, where the person is temporarily vulnerable, but then escapes from the skinwalker in a non-traditional way, seen in Navajo stories that take place away from home. Sometimes Navajo children take Euro-derived folk stories and substitute generic killers like the hook 
which is a killer with a hook for a hand from the 50s in England, and then they'll replace it that. was on the car. And they'll replace that that killer with a skinwalker to replace their story. So, like Jesse was saying earlier, a lot of you can see already that a lot of their, their lore and a lot of their uh, stories are muddled with other stories around the world. Yeah, it's definitely like a boogeyman, like a cultural boogeyman. Yeah. It's, but there also there also may be something going on out there. Yeah, I mean, the thing that, that interested me, I think, when I was just researching is just, like, the countless stories that are still popping up about uh, skinwalkers and encounters with them in New Mexico and, and all this other stuff. And, like, they're, every time you hear somebody tell one of these stories, they're always fucking horrifying. Like, they're, yeah. they're never, 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 like, ghost stories are scary. Skinwalker stories are, like, body horror yeah, I'm not used to like I'm not used to like the imagery of an animal like seeing an animal and then watching it get up and run away. Yeah, you know what I mean. In the way that like that's like that's like something that I think to to like people who know about this are like you know that's like the trope. Yeah, but like I don't think about that or like associate that with horror in my mind normally, and like imagining that happening like scares the shit out. And a of ton me. of the art out there and uh, the the drawings of people what people saw are. Are horrific. Like the the person underneath this this animal skin, the animal skin is like dripping with blood, and it has like excessive limbs that are long and scraggly, and they're just they look terrifying. They're they're awful yeah. looking. Um, but it, what like I said earlier, like I just it feels like it's immediately always muddled with other stories, and a lot of things like this lose a lot of their credibility once you start mixing in folklore of other things and just replacing the monster of that particular story with a skinwalker and being like, oh, it was a skinwalker when in the original story it was a hook-handed killer. So yeah, um, the the cool thing though is, and what we're gonna get into right now, because that's. I went diving for, like, where did skinwalkers, like, where did this originate? And because the Navajo are, uh, or at least they, they were and maybe still are super secretive, it's really hard to figure out where it all started and why this is beginning. And, and it might even just be impossible because I'm sure the, the story of skinwalkers has been a lo- uh, around for a very, very long time before we even started colonizing. Yeah, I don't know how much, I don't know how much recording of their folklore yeah. they do traditionally. There are stories... Um, of the Navajo people before colonization actually working with skinwalkers occasionally, but it always ends up bad and for them, and it, that's kind of how it seemed that the skinwalkers became almost like this... Um, they would use like the skinwalkers to spy on uh, colonists because they could be animals, uh, and so they were almost like an enemy of my enemy is my friend situation for a while, but eventually the skinwalkers just became an enemy of both. Uh, so there was a point in time, uh, there are stories that float around of the Navajo working with them for a little bit, but the stories are rare and they're deep, deeply buried in the recesses of horrifying websites that hurt your eyes to see, but they're out there. Yeah. They're out there. Shout outs to yellow text, bro. Yellow text on black backgrounds that twinkle, you know, that good stuff. It's really, really good. Um, but the cool part about the, the cool part about skinwalkers and the part that I really fucking enjoyed was just how you become one, their weaknesses, their powers, and what they can do. Um, and this is what we're going to get into now. So the Aunt Genie, which is the practitioners of the particular type of witchery, uh, are people who receive their supernatural power by breaking a cultural taboo, um, performing witchery on another innocent person. Upon the initiation of the Aunt Genie, a person is said to gain the power to become a Yin Aldushi, which is what we talked about before with he who goes on all fours. Uh, this is done via a song and dance ceremony used to curse instead to he- instead of healing, which is how the healers and the spiritual leaders of the Navajo usually did it. Uh, it's kind of like a, the negative version of that song and dance. Uh, it's like going prestige class, as I wrote down here. It's like going prestige class in, a, in an MMO or something or in a video game or D&D. Um, and then after that's performed, you are now a, a Yi Naldushi. Uh, Naldushi. Naldalushi. 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 Um, but before that, that can take place, <laughs> what the person has to do in order for you to become one of these, in order for you to go through this ceremony, this cursed ceremony where others curse you and make you, be, uh, you become the skinwalker, you actually have to kill somebody. Um, or do something horrible. Usually, that so this is this is what makes them the villain, correct, other than a normal uh, shamanistic character who would uh, commune with nature and gain like the power to become a wolf or something. This is you kill someone to gain these powers. Thus, you're the bad. So you actually, yeah, your class, your class quests are all 
Easy. Yeah, so you actually right, have, right. Um, so basically, before we get into, like, the specifics, uh, although men and women can become one of these, like I said, usually it's men who do it, and it's believed that only women who can bear no children or childless women are the ones that can become witches. Otherwise, for some reason, they can't become one, uh, and the details are kind of vague and not really there. I will say, after a cursory look at Google for skinwalkers, uh, most of them... Most of the illustrations and or dark night photos were of what appeared to be guys. Yep. However, I did see several like very sexy of wolf like, chicks. Of course. So, you know, you're I more you're more receptive now. Uh, in, I'm in. I'm <laughs> yeah. in. They're, I feel like if I ran across a sexy uh, wolven female in the forest, I'd be like, you know what? Hey, hey, I'm like, like, yeah. I believe you're entering a, uh, an area of life where you're outnumbered men to women like thirty to one. So for every sexy wolf woman, there's like 30 horrific coyote men around. Yeah, but you're implying that a sexy wolf woman wants to be with the sexy wolf man when really she could be <laughs> with me. But she's but she's, <laughs> but she's super Somebody evil. Who's down but with she's that super shit. evil. Yeah, but I'm a, I'll overlook that. That's nice. That's good. Does that make does that make you a furry? I mean, for this scenario, yes. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, I just wanted to make sure we were on the same page. She's she has the power to become a wolf woman. Right. Hell yeah, I'm in. I'm in. So, in that culture, within Skinwalker culture, there's actually ranks as well. Um, and there is the pos the highest possible rank is called the Klesiati, which means pure evil. And in order to to become pure evil, in order to to achieve this highest rank in Skinwalker culture, or witch culture, you get a multiple choice of things you can do to become that evil. It's great. All really cool yeah, things. Yeah, so you can kill a close blood relative. Tight. You can just bang one of your family in incest. Very cool. Right? Or you can just bang a corpse. What? You can bang a corpse. Never like, feel it. Someone take all this out of context. Right. Like, Alex is going, very cool. <laughs> then you can bang a corpse, necrophilia. That's another way you can achieve this highest rank. I, nice, nice, nice. I, or, or, dude, you can do all three. Kill a close blood relative, then fuck your close blood relative's corpse. Yeah, there you go. That's three in a they row. Got, then you get all of it. I mean, then you, you would have does that make you? Does that make you... More evil than the most evil. I know. Person. I'm curious what that would. would that give Is you? that like the S rank of? No, being you just get it. You just get a, a cool walker? mount. You just get a cool mount and a alternate color for your weapon. <laughs> awesome. Oh, awesome. oh cool, you get though. a new it's artifact. Cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so actually, when you complete one or more of these acts, it's actually said to destroy your inner humanity completely, allowing you to become fully initiated in the way of witchery. So these are the acts that you would do to just become as evil as possible and it's like selling your soul for for power more or less so i can imagine it's like well i'd like to keep part of my soul but i'd really like to turn into an animal so i'll be like a low ranking skinwalker i'll just blow some corpse dust on somebody that's not a close blood relative maybe it's a neighbor i hate a lot uh and he's kind of a dick and he keeps like pissing in my farmland in the middle of the night because he's trashed so if i just blow some corpse dust in in farmer john's face he'll die my life will be better and I can turn into an animal. I won't be fully evil. I'll still have some of my soul. But I'll get some sweet powers. I'd do it. I get it. I get it. I get why somebody would do right. that. Right. That's what I'm saying. So, skinwalkers specifically are usually seen as coyotes, wolves, fox, eagles, the usual. Um, but it's also said that they actually can take the form of any animal they choose. A decision based on what abilities they need. So this is where, like, the druid aspect that I see in, like, D&D or video games come in. They can turn into what, if they need an ability, they can just turn into that animal, no problem. They need to fly, turn into a bird. They need to run really fast, turn into a wolf or a cat of some sort, a coyote. Uh, anything that they need to do, they have the ability to just do. And it has, they, there's no real specific rules. In fact, some Navajos actually believe that skinwalkers have the ability to steal the face of a person. And just be that person. So then my question is, does that mean maybe Trump is just a skinwalker? It's possible. Like a, it's possible. a really bad one who has like, yeah. that's why his face is so orange. It just doesn't look natural. Cause he didn't. Yeah. He locked eyes with a, with some guy. <laughs> that's what ago. it was. Trump locked eyes with a skinwalker years ago. And that skinwalker has been puppeting that body around way too long, way longer than he should. That's great. Um, so yeah, they they can, they can steal faces possibly, which is just a weird power. Uh, other abilities that they are said to possibly have, 
If you ever lock eyes with a skinwalker, they can absorb themselves into your body, they can read your mind, they can freeze you up with fear to the point where you can no longer move, scream, or do anything. Uh, and they, That's the type of shit that always freaks me out. Right. And, it's like night terrors. And when they get, and the, the reason they do this also, Jesse, um, when you were asking, is because they could kill you, but if they scare you, they feed off of that energy. That's what the skinwalkers feed off of your fear and your terror. So outside of, you know, this trickster coyote god, they are also literally sustaining themselves off of your fear. But I guess, I don't know if that limits the horror of a skinwalker. If I know that they're just there to scare the shit out of me, just to feed off of my fear, it means they're probably not going to kill me. Let me ask you this. Like, have you ever even just been walking through the woods and just seen, like, a deer? Yes. Like, at night? Yes. I, I used to live in an area where there was a ton of deer, and their glowing eyes are fucking scary as shit. Like, that but shit that- is just scary already. <laughs> yeah. But that's, but that's like, built into your human DNA. Yes. Like, that aspect of us is what we, 4,000 years ago, uh, uh, you know, longer than that, a million years ago, when we were, like, ape men. Like, it's what kept our asses alive. Right, um, but that's exactly what I mean. Like, now, imagine if it was a skinwalker, and, like, it doesn't... My life doesn't need to be necessarily in danger for me to, like, literally shit myself and be ruined forever by the, by the encounter. Right, but I think that it... That the, the legend, the myth, is feeding off of that natural, inherent human emotion of, like, I'm alone at night, I'm ultra-aware, hyper-aware yeah. that anything could come get me, I'm alone... And so it feeds off of that as well. And I just, as you know, as much as I want to truly, if if even if you're saying like back in colonial times, mm-hmm. these skinwalkers allied with the native people to spy on the colonists, right. and they get their whole thing. They get off on fear. Why isn't there hasn't been like the Great Skinwalker War, where <laughs> the skinwalkers do have. I just don't. It's not their style. It's not their style. Uh, their style then makes no sense. Well, I they just, also have weaknesses. Yes, which we're going to get into. Their weaknesses are fucking metal. I love their weaknesses so much because <laughs> it's so gamey. It's so like so video gamey, and it's it's probably stupid to say it's video gamey because I'm sure video games obviously rip from lore, not the other way around. But as somebody who was probably who was introduced to a lot of this lore first from like books and video games and D and D. I love it. It's just wild. It's super cool. Um, so uh, just a little bit more about what skinwalkers look like. Uh, in human form, they're very hairy. They usually wear the pelts. That, Hilarious. Yeah, of course. Uh, they usually wear the pelts that they were wearing during their initiation, which is the only thing they were wearing their initiation. Uh, any wounds that they receive in human or animal form translate back and forth. So there's no, like, <laughs> I gash you in the chest, but if you turn into a, a coyote, that gash is now gone. No, it translates. You can't, you can't like, heal yourself like that. Um, what if I snap your antler off? Yeah, good question. What happened? I assume the antler would stay missing in animal form, but what kind of wound would that be in human form? Just, like, a really weird bald patch on the top of your head? <laughs> just your hair is missing. But that's, like, yeah. not... It's not hair, though. I just... There's, there's a lot of questions here that are unanswerable because they can't answer them because mythology don't. wise yes. it no one cares but like if this is a real if this was a real thing i i just oh okay i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna hands off for the but moment. we're almost done getting through like the basics of skinwalkers because again uh if we really wanted to we could probably spend an entire two episodes going through like the history and like but yeah it takes a minute it takes a minute to like understand exactly what they are but the real shit of this comes from the story right and i think we'll probably hit more of that when we eventually hit skinwalker ranch because i think skinwalker ranch is going to be a doozy of an episode um yeah. and it, like i said it might even be like a, a two-parter at that point we'll see um however skinwalkers are not you know uh they're not invulnerable they have weaknesses um and they're very like cliche weaknesses so one of the weaknesses before we get to their deaths is straight from vampire lore They cannot enter the home of somebody else unless they are invited in. So skinwalkers cannot cross the threshold of a home. um, But that, therefore, they've actually developed the ability or always had the ability one way or the other to make any sound they wish. From animal forms to crying babies sometimes. Just to draw the person out of the home to, uh, to get them to to step away from the safety of their home. There's actually a story that I read of a man who lived on a farm um, and all he heard all of his sheep going crazy 
So he stepped outside, and what he saw was all of his sheep in the corner of a pen, shivering, and the goat that was part of the, the flock off on one side, standing on his back legs with his hooves crossed in, like, badass villain style, laughing at the <laughs> sheep. And then he eventually saw the man and then, like, went back down to, to, to goat form and then went back with the herd and just mingled with them. And so my question would be, why wouldn't you just kill the goat right then and there? Why would you just let because, him go back with the sheep? Because I would be too busy scaring the shit out of myself. Like I that that is like I don't know. I would know if I don't know if I would ever t- touch that goat again. That goat is clearly not a goat. I get. I guess. I just. I don't know. I wouldn't. I would be too scared. They can look at me and take my face or something. And there's a lot of stories like that too, where like they realize it's a skinwalker. The skinwalker goes back to being an animal, and then they they just like leave the animal alone. It's like why? Why would you? Why do you do that? Why do you see your goat from your pen standing upright, laughing, and then he sees you, and then he goes, he gets all scared and goes back to goat form, and then you're just like, oh well, I guess that's just that's my life now. Well, but like. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Assuming, assuming we believe that this is even a real story to begin with and not gibberish. Uh Uh-huh. If I was this skinwalker, I don't understand how the skinwalker feeds off fear. Correct. The skinwalker then, sitting there as a goat laughing at the uh, uh, sheep, would... Then be freaked out and like, oh, it's, I'm just a goat. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Instead, turn to the guy and be like, what up? And freak out the man too, because that's more fear, right? Yeah, though, I don't understand why. I agree. Like, when I read that, I was very confused. And I think if there is any truth to skinwalkers, and I'm not saying that there isn't, because I like to try and be like, I, I'm, that, I'm that guy with the poster on his wall that says, I want to believe, right? Like, I. That's literally on my wall in my office. <laughs> yes, <I said. laughs> so, my guess is that if there is any fear, factual aspects of it it's it's buried underneath the 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 fantastical stories that have been told over and over again that have muddled maybe what the true powers of a skinwalker are with what people believe or wish the skinwalkers had for powers i maybe the skinwalkers are less powerful than the stories tell um if if they exist and maybe they can only turn into animals or stuff because there's a lot of stories like that jesse where just the the outcome of the story is like I don't understand why that's the outcome. (laughs) Like, why are you just being okay with it or whatever? Why would you not run to the house or just take your sickle and just be like, you know what, goat, you are good. I got great milk out of you, but it's time to, I'm hungry for goat meat. You got to go. Right? It just seems like a story that you would tell as sort of a, like a scary story around mm -hmm. a campfire that is inspired to uh, create fear, but also sort of like have the mind wonder. I get all of that, but... I just think it's, you know, it's one of the, and many of the examples of um, terrible bumps in the night kind of stories from all parts of society mm-hmm. and mythos all are different to the point where it's the, even the fundamental basis of what these creatures are has to change in order to keep up with the way people tell the stories. Yeah. So eventually you have a character like the Skinwalker who is also like a vampire now and can become not just a wolf, but any animal in order and it just keeps expanding to the point where it becomes borderline all right i can't believe this now yeah well how about well how about this how about this though like 10 years ago for example right i was sick in bed with a fever okay and i you were cursed to bed yeah i was cursed by uh corpse poison right uh no but no but i was i was sick in bed and i woke up and i couldn't see okay and I was completely blind. There was nothing on my face. It was daytime. And I I was, like, touching my face and trying to figure it out. And instead of, like, getting up and going to the doctor, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was in that, like, I just woke up sort of, like, dream haze. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to be very and, scary. <laughs> yeah. And so I was very, very scared. I felt, like, panic in my whole body. But instead of doing anything about it, I just grabbed my sheets put him back over my head and f- tried to fall back asleep. And when I woke up again and I could see again, I never, I was just happy for things to be back to normal. <laughs> did you ever, you know what I mean? Did you ever go to right, the doctor? But I'm trying to, yeah. No, so wait, what do you mean though? What, uh, what is the, what is the purpose of the story? I guess I'm asking. If the goat goes back to normal, right? Yeah. Like 
you know, maybe I wouldn't investigate further. Oh, because you, in your mind, you're like, maybe if I just go to sleep and wake up, everything will be normal. And I don't have to deal with this again. So, so it's it's you're saying that he possibly would then be like, oh, I must have, it must have been hallucinating. Like you're just but, like, oh shh, like fuck, like what the fuck was that? I don't know. Am I crazy? I would I would think that I was crazy before I believed that I saw a goat standing on its right, hind legs. But, but I but the stories or the information that I was given is that these these skinwalkers feed off fear. Right. Right, and so if they feed off fear, why didn't he keep confusion? Isn't fear confusion? It's confusion. Yeah. Well, maybe you, it's, like, it's like an it's like a great trick, and you're like, oh man, he's gonna be up all night trying to figure out if I'm real. But if I I guess I'm saying I'd probably be a gluttonous skinwalker. Yeah. Be like, give me that fear, baby. I just don't. I I'm not. I, I don't. Can't, I can't presume to understand the intricacies of Navajo black magic, but maybe it's maybe there's quotas. Maybe you just. <laughs> Maybe you just got to do what you got to do. Like, maybe it was like, all right, today, like, the voice from the blackness tells you, like, go laugh at those shit, bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It, it could, I, I don't, I don't question, I, I don't question the uh, mythos behind stuff like this. I feel, I, I always, this is the way I always feel about things like this, where, especially if it's a native story or if it's a story from, like, a Celtic culture or a, um, uh, like, something where, the average, like, Joe on the street, because it's not their way of life, it's very, very different. Mm -hmm. And so they want to put a, because it's so different, because it's ancient, it must be special and must be mythical and supernatural. And, and so they add more um, importance to what is being told rather than just, I'm sure if you talked with the vast majority of, of native peoples they'd be like it's just you know it's 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 a myth it's a myth yeah and it, it's something like if someone started talking about how they truly believed in the ancient greece legends and myths yeah. and we're like yeah no that's totally true uh, uh, oh man that minotaur he's out there <laughs> yeah with, yeah you know, or maybe they're I, just I not like telling that. maybe they're just not telling you the real shit because they don't trust you though you know and, but and i think that's that's another part of it too is people think because we as a society, especially in America, wronged the native people so much that they're keeping stuff from us. So that must also be it because they right. don't trust us. And it's one of those things where, okay, sure, maybe, maybe, but I don't think that we'd go this long without someone. I don't, I don't know. It just no, doesn't. I mean, I see what you're saying. Like, it's interesting, too, because you talk about other cultures and, like, naturally when we're researching these things, you do come across skinwalker-type monsters in other cultures. And while they have kind of, like, the ba same base set of powers, their, their purpose and what they do and why they're around and how they become those things are wildly different than what the Navajos say. So that's the stuff that's less, like... I don't know, like, you read these stories and you're like, okay, like, this happened, I don't know what it was. Right. For sure. Yeah. But, you know, the Navajo do because they have a story about something like that. So they say, oh, that, that was a skinwalker. Right. But you never know. You never know what's actually out there. And yeah. that's the thing about this that really scares me. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I'm, I, I agree with you. Just, like, if, I can't imagine driving around midnight in, like, the middle of the desert and coming across something that you just can't quite figure out what it was. And, um, but... Uh, Anyway, moving on. Um, so that's one of their weaknesses. <laughs> they can't they can't cross into your home unless you invite them in. Um, other things that can kill them. Uh, there's two known ways of being able to kill a skinwalker. One, if you know the identity of... This is classic trope. If you know the identity of a skinwalker and speak their full name, the skinwalker would either die or get sick, really, really sick and die, or just get really, really sick from all the wrongs that they've done. Um, depending on how severely bad their wrongdoings were, I guess. Uh, again, the the explanation of it is really vague. It's very much like, you can speak their name in full, and either they'll die or they'll get sick, one or the other. What will happen? Well, I guess it depends on how evil they are. So did they, did they kill their family member and then fuck the corpse? Right. Or did they just... <laughs> are they like a low-ranking skinwalker or are they like a high-ranking skinwalker? And I guess that'll depend on where they rank. We'll determine if they die. But the coolest way to kill a skinwalker, the best way, is what I said earlier, where you put a you shoot, the, with, shoot the, a bullet in the back of their neck with a bullet that was dipped in ash. Which is how Hellboy kills a skinwalker. <laughs> 
Is it really? I don't. I'm, no, no, no. I just like the, I don't like a bullet. Like that's. Did you? Any, that's probably not in the Navajo legend. Have any of you read Dresden Files? I'm curious. No, no. I've never actually read it. I've, as much as I, as much as I like, am like always being recommended it. Have you? Have you, Jesse, at all? No. Okay. So I've only read the first book of the Red Dresden Files. First of all, phenomenal first book. I'm I'm looking forward to reading more. But apparently, so Dresden Files, long story short, is a fiction novel series about a wizard in modern day living in Chicago who's like a private eye and deals with all the supernatural crimes around the city. Really kind of cool, cool premise. Um, and I guess he deals with skinwalkers pretty often um, as information brokers and stuff. So I was just curious if they, if you had read it, if they represent some of the weaknesses of skinwalkers from fact or if they just make them up. Um, no, I got to get into that. I, I, I should just take, now that I'm like on here, I feel like I should take the dive. I mean, it's a, it, they're really easy reads. Like they're yeah, really Yeah, yeah, that's quick. what I've always, that's what I've always heard is that yeah. they're just kind of like pulpy. I blasted through the first book in like a day and a half and I was done. Um, was that like recently? Uh, yeah, it was within a, the past six months. Cool. Yeah, uh, there's like thirteen or fourteen books. They're they're good. They're fun. Oh boy, the first All one. Right. <laughs> um, but that that's and that's like the two known ways to kill a skinwalker. Speak his full name, like any typical paranormal thing to get rid of it. You speak it's like Mixelplick from Superman or whatever his name is, or right. Pixelplim or whatever. Um, and then he'll either die or get really sick. I guess like. I don't know if I would ever risk just speaking the name of a skinwalker because if he doesn't die and he just gets really sick, I'm ass- I'm assuming he has like a small list of people who probably know his name in full. And if he just doesn't die, he just goes looking for these people and starts killing them to make sure nobody ever knows his name. Um, yeah. That's what I would do as a skinwalker. If I got really sick and I was just like, oh, somebody spoke my name. All right. Well, there's like five people who know me. Skinwalker strats. Yeah, skinwalker strats. <laughs> um, and then uh, the bolt in the back of the spine. And that's like the two ways to kill him. And that's your basic Navajo lore. Uh, that's your basic skinwalker Navajo lore. They're normal people who want to become these witches. And in order to do so, they hurt or, or injure or kill a civilian, an innocent. If they really want to, d- to get rid of their soul completely, they kill somebody that they know that's a, cl- uh, a close blood tie incest or necrophilia and you gain these abilities to turn into an animal or possibly a human and possibly mind control and possibly mind read and get all these really neat powers and you uh, you subsist off of fear and uh, you kind of what your purpose is and what you do is really vague and unknown and why they're around and there's also theories out there that i really didn't want to get into because they're ridiculous that actually involve aliens um which we will. Now we can talk about more at Skinwalker. I was gonna Ranch. say when we get to Skinwalker Ranch, I think that's where we're gonna start talking about the Skinwalkers and their potential alien ties that they have. Um, yeah. The thing about a lot of just supernatural stuff is if you try hard enough, you can tie it to aliens every time, every single time. <laughs> when I went to Skinwalker <laughs> Ranch, I was like, oh, UFOs, of course, of course, UFOs. So. Um, yeah, there, there's, there's possible things. So, Jesse, you have been dunked headfirst into the quick learning of what a skinwalker is. What do you think? Truthfully, I love the concept of a skinwalker. Me too. I think it's very cool. Yeah. The idea of someone who can change their shape. And I think it's something that a lot of people would want. But I like the twist that it's a bad thing right? to, to be able to do this. The people who do this are actually evil. Um I would love to know the good version of it, and if they have, like, a cool supernatural underground war, because <laughs> that would be great. But I also think that everything you said still has that vibe of a very cool myth mm-hmm. and something that in, uh, a- like, ancient – I don't even know ancient, but hundreds of years ago, native culture was – a thing that was used to explain supernatural stuff or things that appeared supernatural and was used as sort of a don't go out late at night because yeah. there's, there's skinwalkers out there used to uh, – also, if you were just an asshole and you wanted to make like a scary story and freak people out, I, I, fe- I feel the reason why it's a trickster god-related kind of thing is because – It's easy to hide the evidence that way. But also, it's kind of um, – it's convenient. Good, not just convenient, but like the person telling the story is the embodiment of that trick, right? That the people telling the story, they're making BS up, tricking you into getting scared, and they're part of that trickster god mentality, right? I think that's it's very cute and cool. I don't necessarily believe any of it, yeah. but I think 
the 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 lore behind it's fascinating and i can't wait to see how this translates into real skinwalker rants or whatever the hell that oh, is dude and how this all i'm Really curious where we're about to go. This so, this this creature gets so much scarier in like primary sources. Yes, that's and that's what we're, we're a few that I picked. So there's a fuck ton of stories out there, and uh, I found a website that was kind of that kind of aggregated some of the best ones out there. So uh, that's where I grabbed a f- uh, three stories from one we can each read. Um, and there's some really like creepy shit I- involved in them. Um, Jesse, before we get into the stories, uh, you did mention the good version of it. The good version of it, uh, of a skinwalker is really just the way they talk about it. It's just the spiritual healers. Um, they don't call what they do magic or witchcraft. They just call it healing via the spirits. Uh, and they have the ability, and again, I didn't really put it in here cause it didn't really matter all that much. But, uh, from what I understand, the, the Navajo healers have the ability to make like um, special holy totems that will keep skinwalkers away. Uh, they can like say prayers to heal those who have been cursed by uh, a skinwalker. So like they have like the priests in each village that can hope help negate the the skinwalker curses and stuff and can create a barrier of protection from them. Uh, that's like the good. That's like the good. The light versus the void. If you want. Now I'm just imagining like Navajo Salem's Lot. Like <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a, that'd be a great story. Um. Yeah, that would be good. All right, so we've got three stories. I'll read the first one. It's relatively short. Alex will read the second one, and Jesse will read the third one, which is, yeah, okay, I've got all three there. So these are pretty creepy, um, and they- I they, have not read through these at all yet, so I'm psyched. Yeah, these are really, really fun. Um, so I'll start with the first one. <clears throat> this one is about, I, from my understand, like a, a, a young teenage girl. This happened to her when she was like a, a young teenager. Um. <clears throat> My grandmother on my mother's side has always been very superstitious. For no, th- no, no, no. Come on, no, I'm no. Not, that's not a good. That's not a good voice no. for her. Come on, no. that's a great voice for a young thirteen-year-old no. girl. Just, I'm going with it. You no. can't stop me. No. <clears throat> for lack of a better word, she's not religious, but she does believe in a lot of paranormal stuff. Her- Bye, everyone. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Listen, it's not that long. Her mother was full-blooded Navajo and her father was Irish. Either way, she'd never been anywhere east of Montana and grew up in Nevada. One year, when I was in grade school, we went to visit her. Most of the visit was pretty uneventful, typical boring old people stuff, except she always kept her curtains drawn shut and would always peek out the window when someone asked what she was doing. She would simply reply, Yanal Delushi is watching me. This went on for, uh, for nearly the entire visit until a few days before we were due to leave. My grandmother and my then baby brother, he's 19 now, lol, were in front of the yard that evening, planting flowers when all of a sudden my grandmother starts shouting, Insert little brother's name here! Get away from that creature! It's not safe! Of course, being in Nevada, we all assumed that my brother had found a scorpion or a rattlesnake, so we all ran outside to see my grandmother clutching my little brother and shaking in terror against the side of the house. Standing out in the yard was a large, black, Great Dane-sized dog. It was staring at my grandmother with an intensity I'd never seen before. It looked up at us, gave us a little huff, and bounded off. I don't remember if it moved unusually fast or not, but do remember it had really deep yellow eyes. When my mother asked of my grandmother what happened, she kept repeating, Vienna Lushi has found me. She then moved a couple weeks after that. Woof. There you go. That's the, that's the last, uh, out of the three, that's like the last weird one. Um, not sure why the dog ran off and huffed. He like seemed frustrated, I guess. And the idea that this thing has been hunting her grandmother for however long and every day she's peeking out. It's kind of creepy. I can't imagine being hunted by this animal creature, the skinwalker, and then just having to move two weeks later because she, this Great Dane-sized dog creature, found her and ran off. It's funny because late in my grandmother's life, she uh, she started to talk about these ghosts, this oh. ghost or, or something that was like in her house, and that was like kind of like it was similar. It's like. You know, nor for the most for the most part, it was always a normal visit to grandma's house. You know, she'd cook or whatever, hang out. But then, like every once in a while, like she'd be like, "Man, I didn't get any sleep last night because like this ghost was just like walking around the house, and I was like in my room, terrified of this ghost." It's just like really weird to hear my grandmother talk like that because she never. That's actually like, interesting because my grandmother grew up, um, in the twenties. And she's my great grandmother, rather. Uh, she's still alive today, and she will always talk about 
how she had two little kid ghosts living in her apartment when she was a kid or in a house that she lived in. And at night, they would always run up and down the hallway and eventually jump onto the bed that they were sleeping in. They wouldn't see anything, but they would feel it. Kind of cool. So, it's so creepy. It's just right? like, I don't know what that is. I, 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 it's weird because well, my grandma never talked about me. She was never like into that shit. And then all of a sudden, like, there's a ghost in my house. <laughs> well, I think, it, I think it has to do with that idea that your parents or your grandparents as a child you see them differently than any other person right mm. because they're your grandparents or parents and they're special and they're above uh everyone else and it's not until much later in life you discover the weird quirks that your parents had or that your people in your family had and so you realize oh they're human too so i, I think a lot of people don't they, they the idea that you're weird out by that i think is like it you not Expecting someone who you revere so highly of having right like human like being paranoid flaws. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel you. I feel you. How about this one? Hit How about me. this one? I'm ready, Alex. I was spending a month with my cousins at my grandma's house. Always the grandma. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was August, and my cousins' ages ranged from ten to fifteen, and I was the oldest, being fifteen. The most credible was, then. Yeah. I was staying with a 10, 13, and 14-year-old. We stayed up telling scary stories often, but one night a few weeks in, we decided to make a campfire out back. My grandma's house is in a rural suburb. The neighbors aren't too far when you're driving down the road to her house. But in the backyard, it's thick forest with man-made paths through it. Each house is on a hill, so only part of the basement was actually underground. That isn't important until later, though. So we're towards the east side of her yard in a smallest patch of open land. You couldn't see the neighboring yards from there, and there was probably three quarters of a mile to each side of us that belonged to my grandma. Okay. It was maybe 11 at night, and we were playing truth or dare after telling scary stories, and my 14-year-old cousin dared me and the 13-year-old to go walk through the paths for 10 minutes or so. I said yes right away, as I wasn't easily scared and rather level-headed, but my younger cousin was a bit more hesitant. We didn't bring a flashlight because it wasn't pitch dark yet, and we could see enough to not die. We were walking through the paths for about five minutes and could barely see the fire through the trees when we decided to turn. In the middle of the path was a large dog-like creature hunched over with its front hands an inch from the ground. What I remember most was how its eyes were so fucking bright white and it was humanoid dog shaped with a human-like head but a dog-like body but human hands and feet. It looked right at us, and I know I was paralyzed with fear as it dashed away the opposite way from us towards a creek that ran through the yard. Eventually, my cousin and I screamed bloody effing murder, and the other cousins and my grandma ran to us. I don't remember much here because I was really disoriented and I couldn't think properly, but I did wake up in bed, so I assumed that I was brought up to the house. All the kids slept in the basement in a big room with sliding glass doors to the outside, as the room was on the side that wasn't underground. My bed was pressed against a big glass window, and I couldn't see my cousins playing outside down below. The house is in Michigan, so it gets slightly chilly even in the end of August, and there was a slight breeze, so I put on a jacket and ran to join them outside, skipping breakfast and not wanting to miss out on anything fun. When I got down, I could tell they weren't playing, but rather running to get my grandma. Her dogs, both of them, were dead, ripped up. That night, we went to bed early. I woke up at maybe 2 in the morning because I felt something hit my head. My cousins were all sitting on the double bed opposite me on the other side of the room. There was one bunk bed and two double beds, the double beds for me and my 14-year-old cousin. They were being quiet and staring at me. The 13-year-old nodded his head towards the window. I froze. They all looked afraid. Oh, man, I'm getting goosebumps. I don't know what's, <laughs> going, I don't know what's about to happen. I turned my head slightly to the side, and I saw a really messed up looking face pressed to the window with gaping eyes looking down at me. I screamed so fucking loud, and it, and it bolted. My grandma called the police after I told her what happened, and they found nothing. I went home after that, and I've never been there during the night again. Yikes. First of all, I love the idea of being like, come on, Jimmy, it's fine, we'll go into the forest. And Jimmy's like, but isn't it dark? She's like, no, I can see fine enough that we won't die. It'll yeah, be we fine. won't die. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to die. Also, the visual of waking up to your cousins like nodding at the window, and there's this fucking monster looking in. Just staring down at like you. Like, not it's... knowing why they're scared. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I feel like for most of that, uh, I think it seems very much like ideas stolen from movies. However, that's a very... I don't believe the story, but it's a very good story because it's specific. Yes. Right? I agree. Like, good 
scary stories are specific. And that story was like, here's what took place, and here's the property, and I'm giving you an outline of what this looked like, and this is what I was doing. And I like that story. I don't believe it, but I like that story. That was a good one. I gave you the longest one, Jesse, so enjoy. Animals Animals getting fucked up is like a big part of the Skinwalker vibe. Yeah, it's so weird, like... They always talk about how skinwalkers want to scare you, but every time you find them and you or you scream loud enough, they run away. But it's also that, yeah, and and again, I I guess you did scare them, but then if they want to scare you and suck up your energy, do they get like a real quick buzz? It's like a <laughs> five hour energy shot and they're out. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't get it. It makes me wonder if that goat in the pen didn't want to get caught because he had a really good life scaring the sheep at night, and that's what he was feeding off. It's of. a good gig. That actually reminds me. Have you seen the movie The Witch? Oh, yes, that was such yes, a good movie. Yes, that's actually a really cool movie. Yeah, yeah that's a fuck. That's a that's a that's one scary goat. And like, that's what I'll say, one of the only movies to do like old timey talk and make it sound kind of natural. Yeah, that's real. That's real. And there's dead babies in that movie too, yeah. which is like another part of Great. the Skinwalker legend. So maybe that's Great. what it was. And the 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 witch in it can like look like a hot woman. Yeah, so maybe that was just a, maybe they should have called that movie the Skinwalker. Just saying. Holy crap! That yeah. it, the witch was a retelling of a Skinwalker happening, told through Christian eyes. Yeah. Boom. Oof. <laughs> okay. All right. Last story. Go for it, Jesse. Oh boy. Okay, you gave me a good one. <laughs> I decided to join my bestie Karen bestie. for a three day stay at her grandmother's place on the res. Her grandmother lives near a place called Tuba City, Arizona, in the middle of nowhere but surrounded by rural homes. We go to college together, and I was kind of interested to know about Navajo tradition. The first day we stayed, it was pretty chill, nothing out of the ordinary, but then her grandma, not that old, around 67, thank around bless this girl 67. for saying... Around 67. Bless this girl for saying 67 is not that old. And she knows how to kiss ass. She's good. Am yeah. I even saying around 67? Like, it's a very specific number to say around for. She probably knows she's exactly 67 <laughs> and wants to just cast some doubt on it just right, in case right. grandma's reading. <laughs> she's being polite to grandma. I get that. Yeah. That's why she's like not that old because grandma is reading this story. Yeah. Uh, so that a stray dog came out of nowhere and wouldn't leave. To me, it did act kind of strange and ugly. It was kind of ugly looking. It acted kind of ugly looking. Yeah. Black shaggy coat. Looked like a mix between a German shepherd and a lab. That night we were watching a movie in the living room. So I guess... What she's saying is that the grandma was just like, there's a dog on the property? Is that what she's Yeah, it looks she's like, like I can't other- get rid of this fucking dog, yeah. Yeah, she basically, grandma okay. said a stray dog came out of nowhere and wouldn't leave her, leave her alone. All right, I just feel like that's, I feel like that's a weird transition. The first day we stayed was pretty chill. Nothing out of the ordinary. But then the grandma's like, there's a stray dog that showed up. <laughs> we gotta progress, you gotta progress, you know, it's like a horror story. So, you know, oh, that's weird, there's a dog. I, I get it, it's just, what a weird, like, the grandma's like, no, there was nothing weird happening. But then a dog showed up. Like, oh, okay, sure. Um, that night, we were watching a movie in the living room. Had big windows and looked out onto the front where cars were parked, nothing fancy. With the curtains wide open. Grandma was in the kitchen cooking dinner, and we were watching a movie. Next to the window is a medium bookshelf where we kept the DVDs. Karen went to put a DVD back that we just watched, but she freaked out because that stray black dog was staring at us through the window standing on top of the wood box outside. Not something normal dogs do, from my point of view, or hers. Usually, my dog, which is a house dog, scratches at the door to be let in. Res dogs aren't allowed, or res dogs aren't house dogs, and dogs inside houses are frowned upon in Navajo tradition, meant to protect the house, the owner. The other dogs seem to stay away from this dog. Karen opened the door and yelled at it to get off that box. It ran off behind the shed. Cut time out. Why is the grandma letting the stray dog just hang out? I guess because she has other dogs. I, is I mean, what like, I'm assuming if you have from land, what I've read so far. If you have like land, like what are you gonna do? I guess, you know? but it, I guess I, my my fear being a, a dog owner, you know, in my past, was that this stray dog would cause problems with my other dogs. Right. You know what I mean? But I, dif- maybe it's different. Continue. Okay. I apologize. We went to Tuba City Can't to get that. some groceries. Can't handle Tuba yeah, City. Look, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a brass every time we say store. Tuba City, it's like. Bah, bah. Brass I just want to put out, also, the actual text says, we went to to, to Tuba City. Oh, sorry, that's so my I, bad. <laughs> to, to Tuba I, I, City. You know, we went to to Tuba City. <laughs> <laughs> to get some groceries. <laughs> <laughs> to get some groceries. Came back to the house. The dog was nowhere to be seen. Nothing unusual. Grandma went to visit some people, so it was just Karen and I. About five o'clock, we heard someone trying to open the door. Both of us looked out since... 
Uh, there had been no car heard, no dogs barking. Looking out in the living room window to the door, there was the dog trying to open the door with its paws. Two paws wrapped around a brass doorknob standing on its hind legs. That would freak my shit. <laughs> that's that's totally... Seriously, while I don't know that I believe this story, <laughs> if I did see that, I you're right. That would be the scariest thing ever. If a dog was like, I'm trying to open this door, I would be like, no. I would, oh, like, I would like hit the door. That's what I would do. I, or I'd invite the dog in and be like, bro, can you talk? <laughs> Are you a talking dog? You just open that door and you'd be like, ah, oh, yes, I can open doors now, Jesse. <laughs> I, I, I'd be so thrilled. I have a friend. I have a new best friend. I have a friend. This is like the worst sourcing for a story ever, but I have a friend who had a childhood friend who, who <laughs> swore who swore up and down for the rest of his life that one day he was sitting on the porch with his dog and like another guy and the dog was just like Sup guys <laughs> <laughs> How high was this guy at the time? I don't know. Sup, and I can see like the bloodshot eyes of the dog, and he's like, "Sup, bro." He just loved the he just loved the vibe. Yeah, forgot, he's like, I'm forgot to Toy Story. Yeah, I love it. That is the story he swears. By. It's like, dude, no, it's like his dude. dog was just like, "Sup, guys." Sup, guys. I love that. That's great. Oh, it is so good. Anyway, continue um, with the story. Here's the here's the part that I that I truly have issue with. All right, yeah. So let's rewind a little bit. Looking out the living room window to the door, there was the dog trying to open the door with its paws. Two paws wrapped around the brass doorknob standing on its hind legs. I thought that was weird, but wasn't really freaked out. Karen was. She opened the door and chased it off. Grandma came back later and Karen told her. Grandma didn't like what she heard. <laughs> Me neither. I wouldn't like it either. Yeah, no, I, if I had seen that, I wouldn't be like, well, that's weird. I'd be like, that's freaky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got ready to sleep. We slept in the spare bedroom since it had two beds. One window with curtains open a little. We turned off the light, but there was sound coming from top of the roof. Pitter-patter footsteps and scratching sounds and panting. It then sounded like it jumped off onto the large plastic water barrel they had. At first, we heard what sounded like barking. But as it grew louder, the other dogs seemed to be barking at something also. But all of a sudden, something was running around the house barking, and it was, no dog, <laughs> nope, it wasn't. <laughs> the barking sounded human. A male voice barking like it knew, we knew, it wasn't a dog. Oh, <laughs> just like woof. a... God. Yeah, like, woof, 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 rough, rough, arr, rough, rough, rough. <laughs> Thank you for oh, leading. Just reading like that. that. Adding the W's and the R's and the A's. That's so Panting fucking Panting again creepy, by the window, dude. we started freaking out. Karen decided to, in my opinion, was stupid, open the curtains to look out. There was the stray dog on its hind legs looking into our bedroom, Oof. but this time it stunk in what I thought were two black holes in the neck. Another pair of eyes twinkled. Think of those ugly, glossy spider eyes staring back at you, and the paws were deformed-looking hands with overgrown, somewhat thick and sharp fingernails. Jesus! Ha well, hold on. Let me rewind. Hold, hold, right? hold on. Hold on. <laughs> it, but this time it stunk. I don't know how we have that information. This time it stunk, and what I thought were two black holes in the neck were eyes. Yeah. So it's like a hood maybe. So like, like someone in a, in a costume. So my understanding is like uh, the way that skinwalkers w work when they turn into an animal, they, uh, the, the pelt that they wear is what like it, it covers them and becomes the animal. So my guess is that he was like in half human, half animal form. And like his human eyes were probably where the neck of the animal would be. I'm imagining okay, that yeah. scene in aliens, uh, four when she goes into the room and sees like all the Ripley's. Yeah. Kill me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Again, both screaming and shutting the curtains closed, Grandma came running through the door and seeing it. First thing she did was grab ashes from the fireplace, load three shells into the shotgun from under the bed. Fuck yeah. Bless herself in Navajo <laughs> and went outside to shoot it, yelling in Navajo about how the thing wasn't welcome there and to get the hell out of here for it to go linger somewhere else. Uh, That's them both being grandma, traditional. First of all, I just 
All right, all right. I feel like this story is literally someone who listened to this podcast, went back in time, and wrote <laughs> the story because it has all the tropes of what a skinwalker is, right? And then it even has like the way to kill a skinwalker, trope. right? The ashes um, in the shotgun shell, yeah. right, right, right. Uh, them both being traditional. The next day, they called a medicine man to come over and put cedar in. He prayed over everyone with cedar smoke and an eagle feather, blessed the place, made us eat bitter herbs called eagle's gull or something, and gave me an arrowhead. Apparently, I need to carry it for protection, and a little pouch called corn pollen seems to work pretty well. <laughs> Great. How does she man know? Said that, of, I have no probably I have hasn't no Probably hasn't seen a skinwalker since. You know? You know what? That's true. That's true. That's true. It also keeps away tigers and uh, uh, aliens. Hobos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The medicine man said that the dog was a skinwalker, which in Navajo is a long word, but I'll call them Yoshis. Okay. <laughs> Great. The body of a stray dog, which was killed by the skinwalker, made an illusion so he wouldn't know it wasn't a real dog. He also said that Yoshi Yoshis tend to harm people by using some sort of human bone straw to spit at someone. Think spitballs, only deadlier, <laughs> and get human bones on uh, into them. Doctors can't detect it, but the medicine, medicine man said uh, that day they pulled a piece of human skull out of Grandma's right shoulder. Pretty big, about two inches long, one centimeter thick. What? It was Whoa. real because we watched them pull it out of out of her. That was intense. So that's like the corpse what? powder she's talking about. So but they pulled for some a reason piece it was like a skull? dart. He shot a dart. At, like how Grandma get hit with an eye of something? She went. She ran. <laughs> out, okay. She ran out there to shoot that fucking. Yeah, she thing. went out there, man. She ran out there to confront him with a handful of ash and three shotgun shells. Like, and a, he was like, <laughs> and spit a thing at her as she came at him. I would. Yeah, dude. I guess. I Dark mean, gun, bro. <laughs> there's there's like a lot of details in this story, but there's also like important details missing. Well, I I think this is if if we had ignoring. Let's take a minute. Ignore the supernatural elements. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Just look at the three stories we had. Yes. The first story is like, my grandmother is superstitious. I'm not superstitious, but she believes in some stuff. And I went to go visit her, and she said that this thing's watching her, and like it was scary, but uh, then she moved. Like, it's an okay, scary story, but there's a lot of details missing, yeah, right? Yeah. The second story has details. It has like a buildup. It has more details, but doesn't present too many details, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it gives you enough information that it seems believable. This story that I just read is literally a play-by-play <laughs> -play of what the list we went through of how you would describe a skinwalker. Right. Yeah. Right? Yep. And so, it, and so thus it becomes less believable. So all I'm saying is, if we can do anything for you, listener right now, if you would like to create a fake story about a skinwalker, please go with number two. A solid story with some details like, I was in my backyard, which happens to be located, and give us like... A good description, and then mention the thing coming to get you, but then, like, don't give us, like, but then I took shotgun shells and dipped them in ash and shot it at him, but it turns out, like, don't do that. Grandma became that. an action hero and ran outside yeah. with a shotgun. Also, we live in modern day. If you see one of these things, take your phone out immediately and yeah, take Yeah, I think that's the, that's the biggest issue, I think, with all of supernatural beings at the moment is that... People are like, uh, before it was my camera was shaky and I couldn't do this and it was dark. Now cameras can take photos in the dark. Mm -hmm. Now cameras are super high quality. Now you have everyone has one on them. So there's no excuse not to attempt to. I, I guess the go-to is I was frozen in fear. I don't know. I just there's, technology is yo, catching up with. Let me just say, there are some pretty fucked up videos and images of skinwalkers out there. I agree. There are some fun ones out there, I, and I would I would recommend you guys. But the the, the thing with, as with most things paranormal on camera, is they're not super in focus, or they're not like they're kind of far away. Um, they're hard to see. But there's some weird shit out there that even when looking at them, like I would like to have somebody look at this so they can tell me what's wrong with this video because I'm still not good enough to know if there's something that I can debunk in it. Yeah, there's some pretty. I mean, look, if you want to go scare the shit out of yourself, there's plenty of ways oh, to God. do that with skinwalkers. Yeah. YouTube is a great place to scare the hell out of yourself nowadays if you really oh want to. Oh, my God. But that's what – YouTube was the incredible, I think, one of my favorite uh, starting points for Slenderman, right? Yes. Even, even though everyone understands Slenderman's BS, the original videos, that viral video Marble stuff Marble Hornets. Who's, oh, my God. Yeah, that stuff's fascinating, and it's very scary. Yeah. So I, I definitely think that the fear factor in these stories – and using it to scare is real. 
Yes. And I think they make for fascinating stories. I just don't know how believable any of it is, but I think at a story level, like deep down inside, the fear that we all feel about being alone at night and seeing terrifying eyes yeah. or being out in the woods and then a dog just being there, right? It, it instills a fear that's like a primal fear in us that you should be afraid. Like if you saw a dog in the woods, Damn right. that's that's terrifying. Damn right. It just the the added idea that that this is some sort of uh, evil character out to get you is something that I think is added to the mythos to make it uh, something that you can scare kids with, or mm. it, it defines good versus bad, that kind of thing. Yeah. I agree. Uh, and I, I think a lot of it is rooted into mythology and gets muddled. If there is a truth, one of the cool things about last episode is there are a lot of people who are sharing their ghost stories in the comments. So if you have a skinwalker fucking story or the, some the, or some footage or a, yeah, or a hit, picture. Yeah, hit the subreddit up. We've got a subreddit up and running. Um, there's a ton of cool conversations happening there now. Drop your stories over there because I would love to read your personal hauntings or your personal skinwalker stuff. If you got pictures, videos, that's a place to share it, man. Because I will, I will devour that stuff in a night easily. Uh, it's really, really cool. And let's be respectful of the people who actually believe that they encountered these things and not, yeah, of course, hoax us, please. Right. So um, that's skinwalkers, man. That's a, that's a, a one hour blast through skinwalker lore and a couple of spooky stories that have to deal with skinwalkers. Um, again, I think we'll be getting into much more detail. Uh, once we do tackle Skinwalker Ranch, so that's going to be a future episode, even maybe a soon episode. We'll see. Uh, and uh, if you guys, again, um, stories, share them away. But I think that's going to wrap up Chiluminati Podcast Episode 2. Jesse, do you feel enlightened or at least educated now? I love the concept. I Me too. Like I said before, I think Skinwalkers are a very cool idea. It definitely, you're right, feels like the evil rival to a druid in yeah. like a D and D setting. I think it's very cool. I love the idea. I don't know that I believe that they're real, but I think in a mythological sense, you can add them to the, to the canon of fantastical creatures that define great stories. Yeah. And so I definitely am down for digging into the lore behind skinwalkers and sort of what roles they play in, uh, the stories of yeah. the Navajo people. I the, think that'd be fascinating to look at. Navajo, I, I would love to do just a, an episode about Navajo lore in general because their lore is fucking cool. Uh, it's all about nature and all this, you know, like the nature gods and stuff. It's really wild. I love it a lot. It's dope. Al Alex, what did you did? What about you? Did you know much about skinwalkers coming into this or not? I, I only knew about skinwalkers from what I listened to. Uh, there's an, a paranormal podcast that's pretty good. You guys should check out called astonishing legends okay and they like cool. they like deep dive into topics over weeks and weeks and weeks sometimes and uh they you know they're a little bigger than us so they can like reach out and get some really cool guests on there sometimes uh which we can someday do you know yeah i, I, I'm, reached, I'm, out, I reached out to an author and he uh he wrote back to me uh but awesome. uh yeah but uh they they like talked to the people from skinwalker ranch and I was just, it was horrifying. It was like a, such a long episode and there was so much to chew on and it just like, you know, driving in the car is a very like sort of like pensive time. And so, yeah. you know, you let your mind sort of like run wild with these ideas as you're listening to them and it just really captured me. But I, I, I had not heard about them before that. Cool. Yeah, uh, I would love to eventually do like a deep dive multi-part episode on something. Again, Skinwalker Ranch is a really good idea, I think, for, for our first one. But uh We'll leave it there. Um, if you guys, you know, enjoyed the episode, now I'm going to do the typical pimping stuff. If you listen to us on iTunes, you know, hit us with five stars. Please. Leave a, a, ra a rating and, and a, a review up there that helps massively with brand new podcasts. Um, and any of the other stuff that you use, if you use Stitcher or Tuner or any of the other stuff, drop us a review there. Helps a great deal. Um, we appreciate the overwhelming support on the first episode. I really did not expect the amount of people who were into it to be into it on episode one. I figured it'd be a little bit more of a build, but people are really into this shit and I love it. So when people, I'm glad when you guys people, it. When people are unhappy with the government, I don't know why this is a thing, but when people are unhappy with the government, it always becomes like ripe time for uh, like paranormal kind of stuff. stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. It's really, it's really cool. And I'm glad that you guys are having a good time. Yeah, and uh, if you guys really like it and the the show continues to grow, uh, granted we're only on episode two, but uh, if things go really, really well, we would like to make it weekly if that's something we can feasibly do. So, uh, again, 
reviews and all that good stuff are going to help us a great deal as a brand new podcast. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, Jesse, where can people find you on the internet, my good sir? Oh my goodness. If you just Google Jesse Cox, uh, I'm all over the place. I'm Jesse Cox on Twitter, Jesse Cox on Twitch, Jesse Cox on YouTube. Uh, yeah, just sweet. find me and enjoy that sweet, sweet uh, nonsense I provide. Which is what we do in spades. Alex, what about you? Where can people find you, brother? Oh my God. Where can't they find me? Find me on Super Beard Bros. Find me on the decks. Find me on the fine Star Wars podcast that I'm with Jesse on a lot Hell of the yeah. time. Find me uh, on Twitter, Faciani A. Find me. Yeah. Easy enough. And you can uh, find me at Mathis Games pretty much anywhere on the internet. You can follow this podcast at Chaluminati Pod on Twitter. Again, the subreddit is up and running. You can go check it out there. Uh, what is it? Our Illuminati Pod? Our Illuminati Pod. Uh, Chaluminati uh, Pod. Yep. Our yeah. Chaluminati Pod. Easy enough. Um, we'll, we'll work on getting that, that place fully decorated and, and with graphics and stuff over time. But uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll be back in a couple of weeks with episode three. Uh, we'll decide what we're going to do uh, for that over the next couple of days. Appreciate you, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.